What's up guys, Ryan here from Mud Gunner, and today I wanted to talk to you guys about optic heights, specifically red dots for your ARs. And this is gonna be more tailored towards beginners that really don't know that much about this stuff. And I wanna say I'm not like a scientific expert on it, I do know the basics, and I mean, I do have a lot of red dots. Like, I am not a beginner with this, but uh, it can get very scientific. So this is mainly tailored, again, towards beginners, and I'm gonna to try to simplify it so that it's not too confusing, because when you make it too confusing, then it gets hard to really understand what you want. So with optics today, we're mainly talking about red dots or holographic sites, kind of like the Vortex or the EOTech here. So talking about those, and then the main heights that we're gonna talk about is full co-witness or lower one-third co-witness, and then there are other ones, but those are the main two that I guess tend to get people a little confused. So this is gonna be pretty simple. I'll try to make it fairly short, but when you're talking ARs, you have a full co-witness optic and what that means is when your red dot is on your gun, you can co-witness with your iron sights on the gun. So that means when you look through this red dot, you see your iron sights as well if you have fixed sights or if you have folding sights, then you could fold them down. So what's nice about that, this is one of my home defense ARs. This one's actually chambered. This is a safe direction to point at that. Uh, you'll notice I do have a set of fixed Daniel Defense iron sights on here, and then I have an aim point red dot. And when I look through there, I see the clear lens, but I also see my iron sights. So. The iron sights are always up and I can use them as the standalone sights. I can turn the red dot on and then I would use both. Now the pros of that is you always have sights. The cons are your sights are always in your way, but I get used to it and it really doesn't bother me. So I do think some people, when they think about it on paper or they hear about it from someone else, um, they kind of psych themselves out from being able to like do it or they feel like they can't shoot this way, but it's honestly, you're going to be able to shoot that way. Like it's not bad. Um, one thing that I thought about with this is I have a Camaro that I drive and if you think about your window for a Camaro with your visor down and your steering wheel here, you have about this much space to see through while you're driving a car. And that does not sound like a lot, but in the grand scheme of things, when you're looking ahead, you can see just fine. And I would say the same thing goes with red dots. When you stop focusing on like the sights themselves and you look at your target, you can see pretty clearly. So I hope that kind of makes sense, but that's how I see it. I can see perfectly fine with the iron sights there and it does not get in my way. Now, are fixed sights my favorite? No, they are not. But um, I just want to say they work. And again, with the full co-witness, not the lower one third, this is full co-witness, your iron sights can sit right in the middle of your optic. You can use the iron sights and your red dot together and it is a very effective setup. You figure iron sights were the ways like forever. We have been shying away from iron sights or like mainly using the iron sights and going more towards red dots with flip up sights, but it still works very effectively. And some of the older setups that I have um, or older style setups like this one, you would have your iron sights and then they would put red dots on top of the iron sights. So this one's a little bit interesting. So with this, I have the standard iron sights, which this is a fixed carry handle. I can look through this sight um, there's a hole in this rail mount here and I could see my front sight so I could use the iron sight by itself or I flip these up and now I have a red dot on top, which it's kind of stuck. So I have a red dot on top or the iron sights on the bottom. Now I don't know the exact height this is. This is not lower one third or full co -witness. This is way higher than that. It's like in the two inch range probably. Um, with optic heights, they talk about it in inches. So like some of the high ones are like over two or 2.26 inches high. Um, the pros of that are you know, it's kind of a heads up thing. So like you don't have to tuck your head in to see your sights. Your head is just right here. Um, if you don't get a full like cheek on your stock, it can be a little bit more bouncy, but again, I think you get used to it. And the other nice thing about having a higher optic on most guns is you can use night vision a little bit easier. So if you have night vision goggles on and your red dot allows you to use night vision pretty easily, you could just look up here versus squinting right here with night vision. It's kind of a pain. So you'll also notice that with some high mounts, people use them for night vision um, or it's like this where you physically can't get that red dot any lower. Now there are mounts that would push it forward and down so you could still use your iron sights with the red dot but those are kind of specialized mounts for this setup. So not as common but it is an option out there as well. So we're going to talk um, about lower one third sights real fast. So this is a SIG Rattler here. I know it's kind of like an AR-15 but not. So with this I have an EOTech on here. Now EOTech does the full co-witness or the lower one third co-witness and you can normally tell by the quick detach lever so if it has the quick detach lever, it sits higher, specifically with EOTEX. So that is a lower one third optic. So with this, your iron sights sit at the bottom of your glass. So like the lower third of your optic. And you could still use them as iron sights and you can use your red dot kind of separately. So you could fold these down and just use your red dot. But if you have both of these up in your EOTEX or your dot, whatever, when I look through here, if 
I turn this on. When I look through here, I can look and just see my um, optic in there and I can kind of look above the iron sights. It's kind of weird. I'll show you guys a picture that I found online. So you can use your sight or your red dot, your holographic sight, whatever, above the iron sights by itself, or you can tilt your head a little bit lower and line them up and they should still be zeroed. So when you look through your iron sights, as long as they're zeroed and as long as your optic is zeroed, they're gonna line up. I tend to zero mine with the dot right on top of the front sight post and it makes it very effective for me. So that would be an example of a lower one third sight is when the sight is just a little bit taller to where you can still use your iron sights, but they are at the bottom of the glass. And lower one third is about as high as you can go for an optic with still being able to use your iron sights. If you go any higher than that, you might need to buy specialized sights because standard iron sights, whether they be fixed sights or whether they be folding sights, standard ones are basically maxed out at lower one third and then you can go higher and then you have to buy taller sites. And there is taller sites out there. Um, I can't tell you all the brands, but it is an option. So is there a pro between the lower one third versus the full co-witness? Um, I like the lower one third for my preference because I don't have to get my head as far down and I run a lot of different gun platforms. So my optics are kind of all over the place. So you'll notice with a lot of guns, you'll have your stock set up. So see how there's a little bit of space between here and the top rail. But then if I go to something like this MP5 here, look at how much space is between this and the top rail. So my sight setups on a lot of my guns, they are all over the place. And this is why I don't fixate on it too much. I can shoot basically all of these guns accurately and I don't notice the uh, height between the optic and the stock that much um, because I just practice with it and I get used to it. So some are better than others. Like this type of stock is not as good as, you know, a standard AR stock or even this because it sits your face a little bit lower, but it's still very effective. And with this, I can't even use my iron sights because it sits above them. But if you think about it, if I had to use just the iron sights on this, then I'm squinting my head really low to use them versus right here for my red dot. So for me, I am very used to shooting a variety of different stuff. And if you are looking to get like started in it, I tend to like the taller sight. So that's the lower one third. It kind of sounds weird, right? Full co-witness is lower, lower one third is higher, but that's just how it is. Cause again, full co-witness would bring your optic down to fully see your iron sights and your optic. Lower one third puts the iron sights at the lower section. So lower one third is taller, full co-witness is shorter. So for me out of the box, I tend to like the lower one third, but I'll even go different routes sometimes. And something like this, I put this optic on a riser. Now, what is the purpose of a riser? Well, depending on what you have on your gun, right? Like I have a light right here that's pretty bulky this is gonna be somewhat in the way of your optic. Now, again, you could still see through it, like see over it, but for this one, this is kind of a close range gun. I wanted it higher. Now, when you run an optic higher, your zeros are gonna vary, right? So this is gonna be like a basic explanation, but when you shoot your round, um, you figure your optic and your barrel are trying to like line up to where they are zeroed at X distance. Now your bullet is going up and then eventually it's going down. So it's kind of, it's science and math on how to make it be accurate at X amount of distances. So you'll hear, you'll zero them for like 25 yards or hundred yards and they're good for this distances. That's gonna vary depending on the gun, the barrel length, the caliber, all that stuff. So with a close range gun like this, I don't mind having it higher cause I'm not shooting it as far and I don't have to worry about all that, you know, different ranges and stuff. I normally zero like my CQB guns or my close range guns for about 25 yards, or I use these hundred yard zero targets where you shoot it at 25 yards and zero it and it zeroes them for 100. Now you have to verify that with whatever gun and ammo you're using, but this is a 300 blackout, so this is kind of meant to be a close range gun. I zero at 25, and this is a very high setup, but it works for this. And then I can use my light, and it's not in the way at all. Now there are some that are in the way, like this scar here, and this one's kind of interesting. So remember I was saying night vision can be used on guns? So this one I have an optic setup where this is an L can, it's not a red dot, but it kind of works as a red dot because it's a one to four power optic. So right now it's on one power. If I were to look through this, I see this on top. This is my laser system for night vision. And it's like, it covers the bottom half of the optic. So when I look through it, I do see the bottom half, but my crosshair and red dot still show above it when I'm aiming and it's fine. And then with this, I could flip it to four power and then it magnifies past it. And then you don't even see it in the optic. So now when I look through, I don't even see it. So I can see clearly without that in the way, like you don't even notice it's there. Now on one part of that might still be in your way, but again, it just takes some practice. And if you want, I did a red dot on top of this. Now the purpose for this red dot, which I haven't got to use it in the way I want yet, is I put this on here so I can try to run my night vision through it. 
because it sits taller so I can run my night vision like this because I really can't get my night vision close to this tube. Like it just wouldn't work to that. So my main purpose for putting that red dot up high was for night vision. And I could just use it as a standalone, right? So I'll probably zero this for like 25 yards, 25 to 100, and then I'll just have to verify it at different distances. So again, I know it might sound a little confusing. I'm trying to make this as simple as I can for the beginners out there. But if you're not too worried about lasers and stuff, um, you don't have to worry about that, right? You can do the lower one third, even if I put like an EOTech, which is lower one third right here and had this, you could still make it work. Just don't let the thought of this being in front of it bother you too much. Like you can shoot past it. So I think a lot of people psych themselves out before they even get to practice with it. And another thing is running pressure pads. So I run a lot of pressure pads up top. And when I look through this and having it on the lower one third, so a little bit higher than the full co-witness, I don't even see my thumb when I apply the pressure pad. But on a lower optic, you might, depending on what you have on there, I don't have examples here, but um, yeah, there are some that just sit a little bit taller. So I hope this helps with some of the information. Now, obviously there's so much information out there, right? There's so many different optics heights nowadays, whether it be red dots, scopes, whatever, um, even like uh, optics on top of optics. So I know it's a lot to take in, but if you're just looking to put an optic on your gun with it being a red dot or something like that, the full co-witness and the lower one-third co-witness, they're both gonna work perfectly fine. I use them both, I just, my preference is a little bit taller, so if you wanna go that route, you can. And yeah, I'll show you that picture again. So when you have full co-witness, you can see everything in line. When you have lower one-third co-witness, you can see everything in line if you sit a little bit lower or tuck your head in a little bit lower, or you can look above the iron sights and just use the optic as a standalone. That's, that's where you're gonna have to practice with it. It's hard to just say, oh, this is how it works. Now you will have to shoot with it and kind of get used to it, but um, once you get used to it, you can kind of pick it up on any gun. So that's why I feel comfortable shooting a variety of different guns with different optic setups. And uh, yeah, just a little bit of practice. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for my next one. I'm getting a new gun tomorrow. Comment down below with what you think it might be. So thank you guys.